Hey everyone, welcome. So today, Sarah Calvary's Shop the Eighth House and I, we're gonna be talking about, um, well, I should say like talking about fucking dragging the chart of very prolific uh, misogynist Andrew Tate. So Sarah, I think you need to request to join the video and then we can get started. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Good. I'm excited to have this conversation. So thank you for agreeing to do this, Sarah. I think we have a shared interest like in uh, looking at the charts of like highly problematic people and reading them for filth. So um, and I, I, I kind of figured that out about you because I saw a, like this is a long time ago. You did like um, reading Tucker Carlson's chart for filth and that was so good so let's talk about Andrew Tate um and I thought we could get started like I just found out who this dude is Me I, too. yeah like just like a week ago and I was like come on like there's so many misogynists out there like what's so special about this guy the answer nothing nothing special about him but he's getting a lot of attention and he's empowering a lot of people in to say the least, like the absolute wrong ways. Um, so uh, I'll just, I'll say something. And then like, if you want to add anything in, Andrew Tate, he was born December 16th, 1986 in DC. He has um, an American father and a British mother. He was like an MMA fighter turned like influencer, MLM scam creator. Um, uh, and uh, major like misogynist and bigot. Um, and he has a podcast and he's like very popular on TikTok. So what we wanted to do was um, talk about like how these things are showing up in his chart, like how he is, you know, creating so much influence, et cetera. So I don't know. I want to hear from you. Like, what do you think? What are some of the takeaways? Like I took my own notes, but I really want to hear from you. What are some of like the things that you noticed uh, in his chart or like the big takeaways? Okay, so I have like my little notes here. I was not, I do not do IG lives very often. So I'm like, not sure what I'm gonna be able, like, am I gonna be able to look at the chart or not? So I'm glad that I took like my little notes down. So if you see me looking down, it's because like, I obviously did not commit this dick bags chart to memory. Um, but right off the bat, a ton of mutable energy, right? This is something that we commonly see yep. in con artists and serial killers. Um, so when you and I were looking up his chart uh there's some people don't know if they have his birth time so like if you don't have a birth time you can kind of only look at a chart as a sunrise chart meaning a flat chart or a natural chart where aries is at the ascendant and everything else sort of falls after that we did find one chart that showed him to potentially be a pisces rising with this like jupiter mars pisces conjunction like right there at his ascendant if we go off of a sunrise chart, it falls in his 12th house. If we use that Pisces rising, it falls like right at the beginning of his first house. Um, his chart is very Sag and Pisces dominant. Like we said, a lot of mutable energy. Uh, yeah. To give you like an idea, Ted Bundy was very um, Sag dominant. Hunter Moore, if you're watching the most hated man on the internet, revenge porn guy, uh, he was heavily Pisces in his chart. So there, you know, you yeah. can kind of like catch the vibe from that. Um, also, I like to weight planets in a chart. Whenever I look at them, you can weight them based on things like, are they a chart ruler? How aspected are they? Things like that. The two planets that are the most heavily weighted in his chart are Jupiter and Pluto. Yep. Which yep. says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so. And it's interesting, like, I really want him to be a Pisces rising, um, because I think, like, what you said yesterday was, like, man baby energy was, like, coming through in his chart. And I feel like, yeah, Richard Ramirez was also, like, very, very Pisces dominant. And I, you know, it's interesting, because I, my whole life have been, like, or as long as I even knew what astrology was, I was, like, there's something about Pisces men. Don't vibe with it. There's something well, manipulative, kind of, like, play the victim-y, sort of like boo-hoo, everyone tend to my feelings, but yet you're too sensitive vibe. 
Yeah. The thing is, though, like, I will, before we dive into any of this, because when I drag a chart, I'm just going to tell y'all right now, like, I'm a Virgo rising, I'm an Aries sun, and I have an Aries stellium. This is a special skill for me that I don't often get to use, um, where I can just be a bitch, like, unabashedly. Um, Every single sign, every single placement has the potential or the capacity for acting in the world in a really positive way or acting in the world in a really destructive way. Um, Case in point, Andrew Tate is a Gemini moon. My husband's a Gemini moon. And I like, I ride hard for Geminis. I love them. Um, But it's two very different Gemini moons. You know, Fred Rogers, heavily Pisces man. You know what I mean? So it's... I I always say, like, we're talking about this in a vacuum that is just this chart. So if you share a placement with him, don't be like, oh, my God, am I a misogynist? Like, yeah, likely no. But, you know, have to give that caveat at the beginning. (laughs) Exactly. And I wanted to talk to you about that because that's sort of the thing is that, you know, what I've learned from chart interpretation is, like, things can play out in very different ways. Like, for example, like, one thing is, um, and it's funny, actually, I wrote some tweets, I'm gonna work on this, but I made some tweets that were like, are they this or are they just a this moon? And my Gemini moon was, are they a player or are they a Gemini moon? So <laughs> interesting, which whatever, I think the word player is sort of like an aggrandizing term for narcissistic, misogynistic pieces of shit, you know? Um, but like, um, he does have that, ve- like, I knew even before I looked at his chart, he was going to have a Venus Pluto aspect because over and over again, you see Venus Pluto aspects and people, not necessarily who are serial killers, but people who are master manipulators, people who hoard power over others. Very common to have a Venus Pluto aspect. And his are in Scorpio. Um, Conjunct. And- what? Conjunct, like right there. Conjunct within two degrees. And the thing is like, if he is a Pisces rising, like forever, um, like whatever, you know, um, yeah, like whatever rising sign he has, we don't know. For some reason, both astro theme and all famous put him as a Pisces rising instead of his sunrise chart. So like if he is a Pisces rising, that puts Pluto conjunct Venus in the eighth house of Scorpio in the sign of Scorpio. So what we're talking about here is someone, but the thing about it, okay, I could like go off about this, but I want to like take it piece by piece here. So the thing with like the Pluto Venus um, aspects, especially harder aspects, which I know that conjunctions can go either way. You see people who, you know, Pluto is the shadow. Venus is how you find beauty and harmony in your life. So there's two big ways that you can take it. Because like what I often see with Pluto Venus is, like I said, the power to manipulate other people. And the not even like we all have the power to manipulate other people, right? Like we all can, but not everybody wants to. You know, the people that are like, yeah, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to run with this. I'm going to manipulate people. Those are the people that get rich under capitalism. Those are the people that have the most success in white supremacy. And the thing about him, and he's, you know, like we said, he's not unique. Like, Andrew Tate is, like, not fucking special in any way. He is, like, the most mainstream, like, basic bigot. We've all known a guy like him. Like, we all went to high school with a guy like him. You know, like, we all... You know what I was thinking? I have to stop you one second, because I had a thought when I was looking at his chart. And so, something... I'm a Pisces Mercury, so a lot of times my thinking is very like synesthesia where it'll be like, this person feels like this song or like if this thing became sentient, you know what I mean? And like a handful of thoughts that I had about Andrew Tate, when I looked at specifically this conjunction, I said to myself, this is the kid in middle school who pretended like he knew someone famous, but like actually couldn't deliver on that. Like he was always telling outrageous lies that could never be verified. Also, um, this, along with some things in his ninth house, are giving, like, if an MLM hun, like, was dressed in an affliction t-shirt, like, it's kind of the vibe. Like, they know how to manipulate these weird power structures. And the eighth house is about wealth that is not money. What is wealth that is not money? It's power. It's power. Exactly. So when you have, like, Pluto and Venus there, there's... Uh, there's a seductive but the thing about it and this is like something I have a bunch of other things to say about like 
the way that his Pluto, because his Pluto is very active, like you said, it makes a lot of, and that was another thing I look for. Whenever I see someone problematic in the world, I'm like, what is your Pluto? Pluto. <laughs> has, knows I did like whole case studies on a bunch of different like famous people. However, like I want to say going back to your original point where you were talking about like, it really depends like how it manifests. I don't, you didn't use the word manifest, but how does it show up? So a lot of times, like, you know, I do readings, you do readings for people. When I look at someone's chart before I do the reading and I see a, a hard or like a prominent, strong Pluto Venus aspect, I'm like, hmm, like probably a master manipulator is not going to book a reading with me, you know, a social justice witch that talks about shadow work, like probably someone who. So then what does that energy look like? And I, I have some amazing, like compassionate people in my life that do have those aspects. And the thing that I've realized is that there can be something very evolved of um, about, you know, a Pluto Venus. If you're thinking about, I bring beauty and harmony to the darkness of the world, you know, for lack of better words, like I know how to like help others see their shadow and heal it. And um, that is an evolved way to have a Pluto Venus um, aspect. It's just unfortunate, you know, like, again, like you don't have to be a manipulator. Nobody has to be a manipulator. We all could be, some people choose to. Um, so I feel like, you know, that Pluto Venus conjunction right there, the thing about it, like what I was gonna say about like, there's nothing special about him. There's nothing unique. He's just like your standard everyday, like junior high, hypersensitive bigot um who like projects everything on other people but the thing about it is like he doesn't try to hide what he is and people still love him and that's the thing that i've been like unpack that's the reason i think that this is an important conversation you know i noticed at the beginning of this oh. try not to read the comments because it i get you know i have sent i get like overwhelmed with sensory but the first comment i saw i don't know who this person was was like stop talking about these people and giving them a platform like the thing is these people have a platform he has like a um, four million followers our they, dinky followings we, are not helping like our dinky andrew tate has no fucking idea who we are like no. is, it is what it is yeah but the like we need to talk about this because this just isn't about one like annoying bro this is about patriarchy. This is about white supremacy. This is about the world we live in and the direction that we're going in life. And the fact that like, I don't know how many people are in his fucking hustlers university, but this is like, he's has a lot of influence on a lot of cis men who are like, yeah, I want to be powerful. I want to have control over my femme partner. I think it's okay that I'm a fucking piece of shit. So. And <laughs> Go ahead. So I'm going up. There's something in this conjunction. I actually, something I do is I look up other people with these placements. When I'm trying to understand mm -hmm. one person with the placement, I look up other people who have the placement. So just a handful of people who share a very similar Pluto-Venus conjunction to him um, in Scorpio, right? So same sign. We don't know the house for sure, but same sign. Jeffree Star, um, Ezra Miller, and Drake, and I don't know if you guys remember this person, M Milo Yiannopoulos, Milo Yiannopoulos, I don't know if I'm saying their last name correctly, um, but just to give you an idea of like what this feels like in other people who sort of share it, um, one other thing I want to mention with this conjunction is this is someone who treats their loved ones and treats human connection as material wealth it carries a almost like a material value to the person The people are things to certain people who have this conjunction people are used as stepping stones ownership is required and one of the things like when you were saying like oh he's just a vanilla dude like he's just a nothing dude one of the things i looked at in his chart is i'm like i bet this guy is the laziest fucking lay you have ever had in your life, like you want to talk about the most vanilla sex you've probably oh, had in your life. I don't know if IG will. Like that. You got down for me saying that, but like, here's the deal: he's got That's his Mars. No, go ahead. Well, he's got his Mars in Pisces, which is actually pretty. It's a, it's softer yeah. for a Mars placement mars rules over like sort of our primal sexual needs things like that so he talks a really big game when you look at like his ninth house stuff well presumably ninth house sagittarius stuff that we'll get to um 
but it's interesting because he would need to control partners because he understands that he is not adequate in this arena. Yep. It's giving yep. incel. It's giving if a 4chan forum became sentient. You know what I mean? Like this is this is the energy of this placement. And when you look at the people who have this, these are also people who dominate those that they are in romantic and sexual relationships with. Um, so I don't Mar know if this is like a, I'm sorry. Mars and Pisces? No, the, um, the conjunction, that Pluto Venus conjunction, but his is like aspecting yeah. that Mars yep. Pisces yep. in his chart. And so when I started to look at it, I'm like, okay, so this person talks a really big game and he really does. Like I went and watched like a handful of his videos. I was cooking last night and Jeremy's like, what the fuck are you listening to? And I was just like, I don't know. Like if you could imagine that Alex Jones and Tucker Max had a baby and like it had a kink for suits that were poorly tailored and two sizes too small. Like that's basically what we're listening to here. Um, but yeah, it's just like, it's so much talk, but it's because he can't back it up physically. Like you would have to, he talks a lot about wanting to date like younger women who are like 18 or 19 because he can imprint on them. He says he likes virgins and things like that because they don't know any better. They have no basis for comparison. If you're a shitty lay, they're not gonna know you're a shitty lay. Like, come at me, Andrew Tate. Yeah, I know. know, I can see it. The chart Bro. never lies. Yeah. Like, it's he not a secret. Talk. He gets, like for all the men that like love him I think it's because he gives off like extremely bitter and angry a lot 11 year old boy on the playground who like didn't get a swing <laughs> you know like that's like his energy but like it's I mean that's what Donald Trump's energy is too but why do these people and this is a larger conversation and you know in anthropology there's like the construct of the charismatic leader which I've been thinking about a lot because I, when I first learned about that like seven years ago, I was like, nobody like falls for that shit. Yes, yes, they do. Like they do. <laughs> collective, you know, but it's, you know, this man is like basic as fuck. You know, his misogyny is basic as fuck, but yet he's powerful. And, um, you know, why that is, I don't know, but I definitely have been like considering that a lot. And the other thing, like, because you brought up Mars, so the thing that I was like freaking out about when I was looking at his chart, and yeah, I wish we knew the birth time so we could include like house analysis, is, you know, that Jupiter Mars conjunction um, that creates the square with, um, with Saturn, with mm -hmm. Saturn. So, with Mars, specifically Mars square Saturn, to me, that is indicative of, and his, what is his Saturn in? I didn't write it down. Badge. Okay, okay, I thought so. So <laughs> another <laughs> square, yeah. So the Saturn square Mars, again, I think like you talking about that Mars, you know, the Venus-Pluto conjunction is being like needing to control because you don't feel like you're enough, which like, is fucking narcissism you know that is the crux of it like i have no value so therefore i put all my value on being able to control and manipulate other people and like ha hold power over them because i have no authentic sense of self or sense of, i don't have any way to like regulate my self-esteem without having power over other people and that's also like what he's teaching other men to do like when they're like he's helping me so much like gain my confidence no you're not getting confidence you're getting patriarchy like confidence is like going out and smelling a flower and being like, I love the way this flower smells. And like, look at this sunset, like I'm in a body, <laughs> you know, like, and I <laughs> know if I need to say no, that's what confidence is. Confidence isn't like manipulating everybody out of their money, <laughs> you know? Anyway, so we've got that Saturn square Mars in the mutable signs. And to me, what I was thinking is, yeah, control, like heavy, heavy control issues needing to be in control. And that's why, you know, and he even like major trigger warning, major fucking trigger warning, he admitted on Twitter, and this is why he was banned, um, that he moved to Romania because he was afraid of getting busted by the Me Too movement. Um, and which is really horrifying, you know, like he basically admitted to being a, a sexual abuser in that moment. And he now is getting maybe charged with that. So like the fact that he has Saturn square Mars, there is a need for power and control. So that like really compounds um, also with the Pluto trine Mars, it's like a looser trine, but the Pluto trine Mars and then the Mars square Saturn to me is like so much need for control over other people. 
And like you said, eighth house, which we don't know if it's in the eighth house or like Scorpio in general, not necessarily material wealth, wealth as a form of power over. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then I, when I, we were talking about the Saturn, so his, um, he's got a little Sag, a little Sag, a giant Sag stellium that includes Mercury, Saturn, Sun, and Uranus. And the Sun and Uranus are like right there, right on top of one another. Uh, that was another thing that jumped out in the chart at me. Like immediately I was like, okay, so this human is pure chaos. Um, but this is kind of where, so to understand this, Sag and Jupiter are big energy, gregarious energy. Whatever they touch in the chart gets made bigger in some way. Um, I love in astrology how the planets like physically mimic their characteristics. Like Venus is the planet of beauty. It's the most symmetrical planet. Mm -hmm. Jupiter is supposed to be the planet of like growth and opportunity and generosity and whatnot. And it's so big that it creates such a magnetic field that it actually gives magnetism to the rest of the solar system rather than taking from the sun which is kind of interesting mm -hmm. but like jupiter knows no bounds this is why there's the um stereotype of like sagittarius needs a lot of freedom because jupiter is sort of boundless and jupiter is sag's ruler um so this is the con man right this is someone who needs to be the smartest guy in the room this is someone who is like really trying to pretend that they have all the answers. They're trying to hawk all their crap to you. Um, this is a weird association that I make, but like Jupiter, Sag, and the ninth house are all sort of enmeshed together, like from an archetype perspective in a lot of ways. If he is truly a Pisces rising, like that early Pisces rising, or even in his sunrise chart, this hits his ninth house. And the ninth house is the house of institutions, higher learning, um trusted sources philosophy morals ethics all these things when you have a stellium like this in this sign in this house this is a perfect storm for a con artist like mm -hmm. a perfect storm for a con artist and here's the thing when you watch his videos which i had not done until last night because i just needed to see like what's this guy's like vibe you know and Literally, it's like if every <laughs> if every motivational poster you ever saw was like shitty and misogynistic, like that's his program. Like it's just these weird little like money isn't real. Um, you know, they, it's bizarre. It's like just inspirational quotes as a program. Like there's no actual meat to it. Um, but he's presenting himself in this grandiose way. Like he has all the answers. He'll tell you how to get a Bugatti. Cause he's like, I guess, apparently obsessed with Bugattis. Okay. Although I did see a video of him like falling out of his Bugatti, which like, I was a little bit stoned last night and I laughed for entirely yeah. too long at that. Um, I that <laughs> but like, this Almost is, he's a con artist. Yeah. Like it is what it is. And so again, some people who share some of these placements, Betsy DeVos, has some of these same placements with him. Um, Matt Lauer also has some of these placements. Which one? Um, so in particular, the stuff that's around uh, the Saturn placement there. Okay. So like the Saturn Mercury uh, stuff, not the Sun Uranus so much, but the Saturn uh, Mercury. And the other thing, he talks about the, the matrix a lot and like, how, yeah. do we, how do we escape the matrix, you know? And that's very like Uranus Sun energy. Yeah it's it it's a little bizarre it's it doesn't understand boundaries it also here's the other thing uranus sun together doesn't know when enough is enough we'll take things too far but then we'll dig in their heels mm -hmm. um to defend behavior that they know is reprehensible like they just it's about being the smartest guy in the room um so it's shock jock yeah. stuff that that makes sense and i looked it up because i was like okay so Uranus conjunct sun, you know, happens once a year, but I, I like to see what happened. So I looked what happened in December, you know, around, um, it was a, a few days after, but like what happened right around when he was born, when that sun Uranus was exact, uh, that was when there was a civil uprising in Kazakhstan, not very relevant to this, but I was like, okay, that was like the beginning of the uh, Serbian war. Um, I, I'm, I don't, 
86. Yeah, that was the same year as Chernobyl. You know, so like, and now he lives in what was formerly known as the Soviet Union. So I think that's like an interesting... Ooh, I wonder yeah. about his cartography. Like, if you were to do his chart cartography... I don't know how to do that, but... Well, you can do it if you have their birth time. You can't really do oh, it yeah, without the birth time because the, the yeah. line won't, you know, do what they need to do. But, like, that would be interesting to look at. I didn't even consider that until, like, just this moment. Yes. Um, the other thing is he's got a north node in Aries, and that is forming a trine to the sun and Uranus. So I was like, okay, like, he... <laughs> yeah, give me your hot take on that. It's just, it's chaos. Yeah. Okay, so, I, again, I love to give partial credit where partial credit's due. He is leaning into that Aries North Node, I guess. I mean, I don't know. It's a, Aries North Node is about someone whose life mission is be more um, independent, less reliant on others, less of a people pleaser, less codependency, you know, things like that. So at least in the facade that he's putting up, he's leaning into the Aries North Node. You get a half a point for that. But like, here's the thing is underneath is this very scared child. And when I'm looking at the fact that like, we said, what was it? Pisces and Sag dominate the chart. So when we have a like an excess of Pisces energy in particular, um, the excess Sag energy makes someone arrogant. Like, lower octave excess sag energy the one word thing like when i'm doing like the silly tiktoks where i read people's charts would be arrogant um for pisces when you have that excess energy it's a sense of like insecurity self-worth um big struggles there so it's kind of like when i watched the hunter moore doc the most dangerous man on the internet I was like talking to people in the discord and they're like, what do you think his big three are? And I was like, there is no way that he's not like Pisces somewhere in his big yeah. three, sun and moon. So, because you could see he's this scared little child and he's very easily swayed, very easily manipulated. Um, and so I think that would be the case. That's part of why we see so much mutable energy in con artists and serial killer charts is that they're very susceptible to the change in the environment around them. Mm. Um, they themselves are very susceptible to like changeable behavior. So they can do things and then be like, Oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. Um, you know, but like when I'm watching someone who has this kind of Pisces energy in their chart, like this is a scared little child who understands that they ain't shit. Yep. And like puts up, it, it's a what did they call it uh they used an excellent quote in that documentary it's a, a sheep in wolf's clothing or a wolf in sheep's clothing they'll like pretend to be you know yeah one who's like big and bad but underneath they're they're timid they're terrified they're afraid they're screaming love me love me love me tell me i'm pretty you know tell me i'm enough and yeah it's, it's actually kind of sad if you think about it like It'd be sad if he did you know because like what i think is you know when you like go to the mall and there's like a man with like a homophobic sign like yelling scripture that is the same thing as trump andrew Tate. you know i would say like the more like overt people but like covert people i think of like harvey weinstein he was very shit shadowed like he was a, sh a wolf in sheep's clothing because he pretended like he like funded feminist organizations or whatever and he was i mean like people that knew him knew he was an asshole but his outward persona whereas like well, this is the opposite this yeah. is the opposite this is the sheep in wolf's clothing like he's terrified inside but he's yeah. putting on this like big like yeah. oh i'm macho like i'll just beat the shit out of whoever bleh, whatever like and it's honestly you could probably just look at him and be like grow your teeth and he would just go to tears yep it's the nine-year-old who didn't get a swing on the playground energy big yeah. old no swing available for me on the playground energy is like andrew yeah um sarah i'm afraid my phone's gonna die i love this conversation do you is there anything else i want to just like be like you share anything you haven't said because I don't want us to lose this video because I oh. don't. So the last thing I'll mention is the Gemini moon because Gemini moons get a lot of hate. This is not an inherently bad placement in anyone's chart. Like I said, my husband's a Gemini moon. Uh, a lot of it's dependent upon like the rest of the chart and whatnot. 
his Gemini moon is what is the thing that I think makes him the most dangerous. Um, because Gemini moons, when they are in their worst of the worst state, tend to be emotionally illiterate. They don't, they intellectualize mm. emotions. So what ends up happening when you have a chart that, that's like this mutable with a highly analytical, emotionally illiterate Gemini moon that's aspecting the things that it's aspecting in his chart is that you get someone that feelings just sort of, everything's feeling and it sort of happens to him. And then he has no sense of empathy. Everything is strategy. Everything is like, use your tongue in a sharp way, get the dig in get the hot take out and then afterwards the fallout is probably for him i would i would be curious how this person sleeps at night but like because he's very soft on the inside and so i almost wonder like do you lay in bed and like agonize about these things but the gemini moon is it's disconnected emotionally this isn't to say they don't have emotions but all emotions are colored through intellect, strategy, analytical stuff, reason. And so when he gets a feeling, it goes calculating. It doesn't go like, hmm, wh what is this feeling? Why do I have this feeling? It goes into like a calculating mode. Mm. And so that is the, the thing that I think is like at the crux of what happens here. They also, things happen to them. This is something I do fight with my husband about where I'm like, did, did it happen to you? Or did you do a thing to cause this? You know what I mean? Like, totally. And he takes responsibility. He's like, no, you're right. Um, but like, the the Gemini moon is another piece because it it shows further a lack of empathy and a real lack of being able to identify and understand and unpack emotions. Yes, air moons challenge. <laughs> A lot of sense. Um, well, I would love to keep talking, but I just want to make sure that we can like save this video so my phone doesn't die. But thank you so much. And I feel like we should do this again. We should find another problematic, you know, problematic is a soft term, but like another like problematic public figure and do this again. Let us know, y'all watchers, would you be down with that for us to do more of these videos? Uh, <laughs> Now, hopefully I'll learn how I'll actually be able to like end this video and not have it just disappear into the ether. If I can save it, I will. If it gives me the option. Okay. Bye, Sarah. Bye. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks everybody for being here. Thank you. Bye.